have discussed the interstate infrastructure needed for uh, hydrogen to play a significant role in the cleaner energy future. We'll hear from our witnesses about the outlook for developing this infrastructure. We will also hear testimony about the statutory and regulatory frameworks that may affect these projects. And this committee has jurisdiction over FERC, which oversees siting and permitting of interstate natural gas pipelines. FERC also sets rates charged to ship natural gas, petroleum products, and electricity between states. As the potential for hydrogen-based energy grows in our country, we have a responsibility to ensure clarity and predictability regarding the laws that apply to interstate hydrogen energy projects. Hydrogen has received a lot of attention from members on both sides of the aisle, including many on this committee. And I know many of us here today are interested in the opportunities for hydrogen in our home states and for good reason. Clean hydrogen can decarbonize our energy intense sectors, promote American economic prosperity, and provide energy security. Whether that hydrogen is produced from fossil fuels with carbon capture, renewable energy through electrolysis, or even nuclear power. The International Energy Agency forecasts that under a net zero emissions by 2050 scenario, global hydrogen demand will more than double between 2020 and 2030. But for wide scale deployment of hydrogen as a fuel source, transportation and delivery, infrastructure must be developed. Today, there are limited options for commercial transportation of hydrogen. The U.S. currently has a hydrogen pipeline network of only about 1,600 miles, compared to 300,000 miles of natural gas transmission pipelines and 200,000 miles of petroleum product pipelines. Hydrogen reacts differently with steel than natural gas, so we will need infrastructure to be specifically prepared to handle hydrogen. We will certainly need to build some new infrastructure dedicated solely to transporting and storing hydrogen. There's also potential to adapt our country's extensive natural gas delivery network in the near term to support a blend of hydrogen and natural gas, and perhaps in the longer term to transport pure hydrogen. More work is needed to look at the safety and feasibility of these modifications. Really, we've got a lot of work to do to make our hydrogen goals a reality. We must accelerate these efforts for the sake of both our energy security and our environment. This takes me to my next point. We need to remove uncertainty regarding the regulatory process for developing hydrogen infrastructure. We should fully expect that the hydrogen network of the future will cross state lines. In West Virginia, we're anticipating hydrogen could flow across our borders from Ohio, Pennsylvania, Kentucky, and our other neighbors. Our committee helped provide $8 billion in funds for regional hydrogen hubs and a bipartisan infrastructure bill. To develop the hydrogen infrastructure needed to support a clean and secure energy future, the rules of the road must be very clear. Clarity is important for hydrogen pipeline developers, producers, consumers, and communities potentially affected by this development. It appears there is uncertainty today around which federal laws apply to interstate hydrogen infrastructure and also about which federal agencies could or should be involved in siting, permitting, and setting rates for using this infrastructure. If that is the case, our committee should take steps to ensure predictable and effective regulatory framework because regulatory uncertainty benefits no one. There's a compelling argument for FERC to play a role for interstate hydrogen infrastructure similar to the responsibilities it has for natural gas and petroleum pipelines today. For natural gas, FERC uh, reviews proposals to site new interstate pipeline storage, import, and export facilities, and is a lead permitting agency. Under the Natural Gas Act, FERC has final say on a pipeline route. After receiving a proposal from the developer and input from state agencies, communities along the route, and other stakeholders. I've certainly had my fair share of disagreements with FERC over natural gas issues recently. Still, it's clear to me that the Commission's Natural Gas Siting Authority helps avoid challenges that we see again and again developing in other types of interstate energy infrastructure. If the absence of a federal siting and permitting authority, years-long disagreements between different states and agencies over approvals have delayed or blocked projects that our country desperately needs because many of the energy applications for hydrogen are similar to those for natural gas. It certainly makes sense to regulate hydrogen infrastructure in a similar fashion of the nas natural gas facilities. No matter what, the Natural Gas Act and FERC will play at least some role in the growing hydrogen economy. Researchers, researchers and natural gas companies with support from DOE are already piloting and transporting of hydrogen blended into natural gas pipelines. These blended pipelines are subject to the Natural Gas Act as FERC's, as FERC's chairman has confirmed. For oil pipelines, FERC has also has a role, though it is more limited. 
FERC sets rates and service requirements, but, setting, but siting is left to state authorities. This approach has its benefits and drawbacks, too. I'm interested to hear our witnesses' perspectives on both approaches today. I also want to acknowledge that ensuring the safety of hydrogen pipeline is absolutely critical. This is the responsibility of DOT's Pipeline and Hazardous Materials Safety Administration and our colleagues on the Commerce Committee. Now, with that said, we have a crisis in the country. We face huge challenges getting the energy infrastructure we absolutely need cited, permitted, and built. These challenges weaken our energy security and jeopardize our ability to meet our climate goals. My position is this. We can't be short-sighted here. We need to look to the future and play the long game. We must get the right regulatory structure in place now at the ground floor that will help us accelerate hydrogen to scale in this country. So I look forward to hearing from our panel of witnesses on these topics to ensure our nation can start putting hydrogen infrastructure to use to fuel a cleaner and more secure energy future. And with that, I'll turn to my ranking member and friend, uh, Senator Brasso, for his opening remarks. Well, thanks so much, Mr. Chairman, and I agree.